Let us read uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. The Apostle Paul is saying these words, and he's saying, I am under obligation both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Okay, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we worship you, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for the evangel. We thank you for the good news. We thank you, Lord, for lifting us from the pits of hell and placing us, Lord, in your Son in the heavenly places. We thank you for this great news for us lost sinners. Father, we have experienced that gracious word, that powerful word in our lives. Father, we know that we could not have converted ourselves. Truly, Lord, the gospel is the power of God, and only you can do such a mighty work. It is a supernatural thing, and only you can do it. Help us, O Lord, to realize that, what we have experienced in our own life, that it is a supernatural To share the gospel with others around us when we share the gospel, that it is you who is at work through our words. Lord, give us all a commitment to share the good news to everyone we come across in our life. Please give us grace that we may share the gospel with our children, with our parents, with our immediate family members, with our co-workers, with everyone who, with whom we come in contact with. Please give us grace. Make us a healthy church. Make us a living church. Make us a spirit-filled church. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay. I'm going to mostly ask questions. So I, I'm going to solicit your responses. Because I have been through so many uh, evangelism uh, outreaches. And I've noticed that if you do it a certain way, uh, brother, uh, if you do it like that, they'll close your door. They'll close their door. You shouldn't do that. You have to take some other route, right? I've noticed that. So I want to ask, the, the goal of asking the question is so that you may know what is evangelism, right? All of us have wrong views of evangelism. You see, as long as we think Conversion is man's manipulative words. Man somehow uh, getting at a response. If we think conversion is an immediate thing that can be affected by our intellect, right? Obviously, then you won't do the right way of evangelism. You'll resort to your own means. You'll try to be a trickster. You'll try to be an intellectual, whatever. And ultimately, it's of no avail. Why? Because the gospel is in itself offensive. And it is meant to be that way. So that when anyone is converted, you know for sure it is not your doing. Right? When, when you say something good, somebody accepts it, right? There's nothing in it. But when you say something that is very offensive, that really puts the man in the dust, and then he is converted, then you know one thing for sure. It is not your doing, because your words are very offensive. Right? If it is, and you know that the true reason, cause of conversion is God himself. Because the word was very offensive. Okay, so what is evangelism? That's what, evangelism is an important, essential mark of a living church. What is evangelism? What is evangel? We just heard it. What is evangel? Okay, should we go like this? <laughs> I need answers or else I'll go like this. What is evangel? Good news. 
Evan uh, what is evangel? Then we'll go to evangelism, okay? Evangelist also we'll go. What is evangel for now? If you tell me good news, I, I'll not, uh, for me that's an inadequate answer, right? I'm trying to be very technical, so give me technical answers. What is evangel? Yes, in simplest form it is good news, but in a Christian context, what is it? The gospel about whom? Does the gospel start with Jesus Christ? Does the gospel start with Jesus Christ? I thought we believe in a Trinitarian God. Does the gospel start with Jesus Christ? Huh? God the Father, that's good, right? So what, what about God the Father should we know in the gospel? Right, we start with the Father, He's holy, He's just. Yes, He's holy, He's just. So what? Exactly. We are under His wrath. Against this background, God gives His Son. God gives the Lord Jesus Christ. God acts to save sinners in Christ. Right? It is God's action in sending His own Son. Right? And the content of the gospel is God's own son. I'm just preaching to you what Paul is saying in Romans 1. Right? If you read Romans 1, 1, Paul is saying, I'm set apart for the gospel of God. And then verse 3 and 4, he gives the content of the gospel, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. The evangel is, the good news is, what God has done in Christ for sinners, in that he gave his son through his son's death, burial, resurrection. We are offered forgiveness of sins. We are offered a new life in the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus giving the Holy Spirit to us, making us a totally new person, in that we hate sin, we love God, we give glory to God. Do not forget the third person of the Trinity. The Lord Jesus ascending into heaven pours out his spirit on us. Through his spirit we are made new creation. Right? That's the evangel. God in Christ saving sinners giving us the Holy Spirit in Christ making us a new creation. Now what is evangelism? We'll come to evangelist. <laughs> what is evangelism? Who, who does evangelism is an evangelist, right? Okay, what is evangelism then? Sharing the, uh, be technical. <laughs> Sharing the evangel, right? Okay, evangel, right? Okay, right. So, what if your gospel does not have God as the beginning, the mediator as Christ, this new creation through the Holy Spirit? Can you consider it the gospel? What if I tell you? We must do good works. We must be a gospel church. We must go and show compassion. Is that the gospel? We must be involved in humanitarian efforts. There is an earthquake in Haiti. Let's go, let's collect a fund, let's send food. Is that the gospel? Why is it not the gospel? Because it doesn't show our 
Right. We must not confuse good works after our conversion to the gospel itself. Right? The gospel, remember, if it doesn't go back to God as the beginning, all of God in the gospel, it's not at all a gospel. So many churches actually think without being gospel-centric, Sunday after Sunday, not teaching about Christ, they meet one hour or 30 minutes. They think they are gospel-centric, they are a true church, just because they raise this much amount to help the local community. They send funds to a missionary organization. And they think that itself is the gospel. What I'm trying to say is we must be very clear. We must, if once we mi miss the, the center of God, right, then that's not gospel. Gospel is all about God. So it's not social action. So when someone is trying to tell the gospel, right, you tell your personal story. You know, I was in a Hindu background. I was converted. I became a new person. Is that the gospel? Why not? What? What, Rakesh? It's a witness, good. Right. But why else it's not the gospel? I. So, the, you know, did you notice? Never God was the beginning. Never Christ was mentioned. Never, yes, a part of I became a new creation. But my gospel presentation did not begin with God and what he has done in Christ. But it's somewhere at the end, after me being the focus, somewhere at the end there is I became a new creation. Right? So why I'm saying this is, many times we may be misled in thinking somehow our personal conversion, it is a part, don't get me wrong. It is a part, there is a place for it, we must do it. But when we shift the focus from God and his actions in Christ, and we make our subjective experience as the gospel, right? We miss the point. So it's very important not to, there is a place for personal testimony, but not to put it at the most prominent place. Now what is the objection for that, by the way? So you say, I became a new person, I'm converted. Why is the unbeliever not interested in it? Huh? They don't believe? Right, that is true. Neek to Krist Pravar Jaisaru. <laughs> That's one, okay. So what do, you, what do you do then? You got stuck, right, what else? Especially in America, right? Oh, it works for you? That's fine. What works for you will not work for me, right? Subjective experience. But the gospel is objective facts. We start off with God the Father, we in sin, God the Father acting in giving his own son. We must always get to this core. Right? Okay, the gospel is not personal testimony, it's not social action, it's not compassionate acts. Neither is it apologetics. Some of us have friends who want to demolish the Christian faith. Who wants to say, you are a dumbo? You are a dumb by being a Christian, right? So what is our natural response? We get a couple of good apologetic books. We are challenged. We are ready now. Okay, I have all the answers. We listen to Ravi Zacharias for three days, four days. We have the responses. We go to uh, godanswers.com or godanswers.org. All the apologetic, all the skeptical questions are answered. We are ready. And then we are ready to take, him, take the unbeliever on. Is that evangelism? 
Is it? Why not? Huh? It's not God centric. Again, it's motivated out of I need to get back. Right? Or I need to get even. Right? It's not centered around God and His love for sinners. It is centered around this guy hit at my ego, so I'm going to get back to him. Right? Again, don't, what I'm trying to say is apologetics has a place. But we must put it at its right place, right? The gospel is, again, like I, like I said, like, it begins with God, and it begins with what God has done in Christ, and what Christ offers us through forgiveness of sins, and also the Spirit of God working in our lives to make an, a new creation. It's, the gospel is centered around the triune God. Okay, we considered what it is not. Now let's look at what it is. It is positively declaring, proclaiming what God has done in Christ for helpless sinners. Let me repeat it. It is a positive declaration. It's a positive proclamation. Of what God has done in Christ to save helpless sinners. It is the activity of God. It is a proclamation of the activity of God in saving sinners in Christ. That's what it is. And if we miss that right, you are not sharing the good news of God. You are not sharing the evangel of God. You're sharing your own evangel. What you think is the evangel. If you empty God of the gospel, it is not the gospel. It may be some other good news, but it is definitely not the good news that the Bible proclaims. And so, again I say, when we start evangelism, God must be the center. Now, when God is the center, do you think you will get an immediate response? What should you expect? So, you, before you tell them about the Lord Jesus, what must you tell them? What must you tell before you tell the Lord about the Lord Jesus? You're a sinner. You must tell about sin. You must tell about every man's lost condition. Every man is wretched before God and we are going to stand before a holy, righteous judge. And do you think people will accept it? Do you think people will accept it? No. In fact, one of the prominent preachers in this country, supposedly prominent preachers, says that is... We are doing ourselves a great disservice by talking about sin. We must not talk about sin. We must not talk about, that's the greatest block for people to receive Christ. So we must never talk about sin. Now, let me uh, hypothetically ask you a question. You don't talk about sin. Let's say someone accepts the Lord Jesus. What is he most likely going to be? Hmm? More? More sinful. He would definitely be, most likely, God can use anything, but he'll be a false convert. Why? Because he has never understood what sin is. He has not understood his wretched condition and what God has done in Christ. And so he'll come to church thinking, not having an idea about sin, not seeing the preciousness of the Lord Jesus. And still, one of the things that happens is, we'll be attracted by sin. We produce false converts when we do not emphasize sin. So, the evangel must begin 
with our wrong relationship to God. Sin as the hindrance, sin as a blockage between God and man. And then once we tell about sin, here is what God has done for you. Giving God's provision of salvation. Right? Are there going to be shut off doors immediately? Yes? Does it mean you have failed? You haven't failed Krupa. Why, why did you not fail? She said, when someone shuts off the door on me, I have done my job, I have not failed, I have still done the job of an evangelist. Why, did, why do you think so? Even after someone didn't receive the gospel, they shut the door on you. Yes. Because she is being faithful to what God has told her to tell. If the person accepts him, accepts her, and God rejects her, right? By, sh by her distorting the message. Is she faithful to God? She's not. But by being faithful to God and presenting the message and being rejected by men, she's faithful to God. So in, God, in evangelism, one thing we have to learn as the people of God is, it's a, it's a, it's a message that is not received. But that doesn't mean you have failed. You have still passed. Why? Firstly, you have shown obedience to God's word by preaching the gospel, by telling the gospel. Second thing, unconsciously, you have glorified God for his saving work in Christ. That's very important. You may not think it at that time that you are glorifying God, but actually what you are doing is you are glorifying God by proclaiming God's salvation to sinners. God's glorified in that act. Evangelism is a positive declaration of what God has done in Christ to save sinners. Okay, who should do evangelism? All converts. That's right. Absolutely. All converts. Is it the... Is it the job of the pastor? I remember Paul Washer saying once, someone asked him, Brother Paul, how, how are you able to preach the gospel like that? His response was amazing. He said, I'm converted. I'm not saying if you're not telling the gospel, you're not converted. <laughs> That's not my point. But when you are converted, you know in Mark 5, we read of a man who has been transformed after meeting the Lord Jesus. And he says, I want to come after you. The Lord says, no, no, you should not follow me. But, and then scripture goes on to say that he went and declared the great things God has done for him. Right? So if we are converted, our natural response is to share the good news, to share this great news. Every disciple is given this responsibility to share the good news. Okay, let us, uh, I want to show a few scriptures that tell us clearly it's not the uh, apostles alone that did share the good news. Let us turn to uh, Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. So here we read, um, Stephen, was, Stephen was martyred, right? And there was a great persecution, verse 1. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men uh, buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him, verse 4. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. No. Whoever was scattered, they went about, wherever they went, they preached the word. They shared the good news. They shared the evangel. So in the early church, what we see is not just apostles, not just a few prominent members, but wherever 
the believers went, they shared the good news. Let us also look at Acts chapter 11, verse 19. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except Jews. But there were some of them, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. So again we, we see some of them, meaning whoever heard the word in Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, they went, uh, they went and spoke to the Hellenistic people. And we, we see that the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number who believed turned to the Lord. So in other words, Every believer is given this amazing privilege, responsibility to share the gospel. If you are sitting in the pew, if you are saying you are saved, it is God gives you this great privilege to share the good news. To share what God has done in Christ for us lost sinners. So we looked at what is evangelism. Who should do evangelism? Why should we do evangelism? Why should we do it? It's an obedience to the command, right? Obe obedience to the command of God. One way we worship our God is by obeying His command. And uh, yes, yes. So let us turn to Matthew. Uh, 28 last three verses last Matthew 20 verse 19 28 verse 19 go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and behold I am with you always to the end of the age it is a commission it is a command that the Lord Jesus gives to his disciples if we are his disciples we obey, thus we worship God. And Sister Krupa mentioned the second great motive, sorry, wrong word, the first great motive to tell the good news is our love for God, is our love for God. How are we expressing our love for God when we share the gospel? Sister Krupa will start and then I want others to give you your feedback. How are we expressing our love to God by sharing the gospel? Yes, it is an act of obedience. There is love there, right? What else? You, as a convert who tasted the love of Christ, cannot be silent in, without sharing. The So one of the things that happens to us is when we are converted, if we are truly converted, we know our rightful place. Whereas in sin, we say, I am the Lord of the creation. I am my own God. In conversion, what happens is, I am not my own God. I am a creature. I am a servant of the living God. We come to know our rightful place. And one of the things we know as I'm a servant of God, I am created to glorify God by obeying Him. And one of the things that happens is not only that we want to obey Him, that is true conversion, but we want people who are made in God's image 
to obey him and glorify him. We love God so much that when someone is not obeying God, we mourn for their sin. It's not just our personal mourning or our sin. Mourning over other sin as well. Why? Because this person who is created in God's image is not walking in the ways of his creator. We see obedience in that person as a love act for his or her creator. Paul says this in Romans 1. Why did God give uh, Paul the apostleship? He goes on to say in Romans 1, 5. To bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name. To bring about the obedience for the sake of his name. We desire that everyone walk according to God's word. And that will be our greatest motive. We know that when a person accepts the Lord and he walks in the ways of the Lord, he is glorifying God. He is doing his rightful job. He is loving God. That's what happens. And therefore, it is a great motive to see other people also serve and worship the living God. We do it out of obedience. We do it for the love of God. What is another great motive for evangelism? We said, we said God saves sinners, right? Therefore, God will save sinners no matter if I tell the evangel or if I don't tell the evangel. Is that right? God, it is God's work, right? God's action upon sinful sinners. So it, I don't have to tell the gospel. God's going to save. After all, it's a supernatural act. No matter what I do, God will still save. Is that right? No, right? Why not? We desire to do His will. That's true. We read... God works through means, God could have done what he wanted to do without the agency of man. But God uses this means of saving sinners, that is you and me sharing the good news. This is God's appointed means. So, so though we know God saves sinners, we also know that he uses us to share the good news. Therefore. We must join God in his saving work of sinners. Is election a hindrance for sharing the gospel? Is evangelism, is the doctrine of election a hindrance for sharing the gospel? Is it a, is it a, What do you call it? Is, a, is it a dumber or is it a... Is it a stumbling block for, for evangelism? No. no. I want you to read a couple of verses for Paul, how his belief in the doctrine of election spurred him for more evangelism. Turn to 2 Timothy 2, verse 10. He says this, therefore, 2 Timothy 2.10, this is Paul going to his deathbed, right? This is what he says. Therefore, I do everything for the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. He's saying, why do I suffer this much? I'm being persecuted as a criminal. I'm in bonds. I'm in chains. I'm in this prison going to be dying soon. But why do I want to go through all this? 
I endure everything for the sake of the elect. I know God is going to save sinners. God has chosen it eternity past for, for this salvation. And I'm, I'm in God's plan, proclaiming, I'm the means, I'm God's hand. So that they, the elect also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. I'm just giving you one verse, but there are other verses. It is a great motive. Obedience to the great commission, love for God, this belief that we are partnering with God in his act of saving sinners is another great motive for us to share the gospel, to share the evangel. Okay. How should we evangel? How should we do evangelism? First of all, we must tell the truth. Paul says, we have not distorted God's word. We have not adulterated God's word. Let us turn to 1 Corinthians. Actually, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Verse, chapter 4, verse 2. Chap 2 Corinthians 4, 2. Paul says, we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Remember what, he say, what he's saying? We, we have renounced disgraceful ways. We refuse to practice cunning ways. We refuse to tamper with God's word. But by the open declaration, open proclamation, open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. When, when you see a man who is not a believer, a woman who is not a believer, honesty in your heart about their condition before God, because that's the truth. We must tell them of their lost condition. We must tell them of the terrible day that they are going to stand before God. We must tell this evangel in this urgency mode. We are told in scripture that we don't know what is awaiting for us tomorrow. We must have this urgency looking for every opportunity, redeeming the time. Like I already read, as much as possible, taking from the word of God. I went, went uh, with Savary brother to a person uh, who was a philosopher. This philosopher was like, philosophizing and he's never ending. <laughs> Sorry brother would take his Bible and he says, whosoever believes in this word, he has eternal life. Don't, don't talk too much. <laughs> and he would take him to scripture and he would, finally the guy actually was, he was, uh, at least I think so, he was like, Sorry brother was just pointing to the word. I was just watching because he was, he, he, I couldn't say much because there was no point. Both of, the, this guy was philosophizing and this bro, our brother was trying to evangelize. And it was very, one thing that struck me that day was like how instead of going off on our tangents and debates and all that, right? So every brother was like turning to John's gospel. Looks like he has read the gospel so much that he knew every verse where it was. So he was turning to every verse and showing if you believe in the Lord Jesus. Don't worry about the future. Just believe in simple faith, repent, believe. You'll receive the gift of eternal life. Use the scriptures. Let the gospel proclamation be the scripture itself. Prayer, much prayer. Again, we must remember conversion is not an act of man. It is a supernatural work of God. 
prayer, dependence on God. I want to just close with this, right? Missions, right? Missions is a way where you are telling the gospel. Whom you cannot reach directly, you are reaching indirectly. Where there are only non-believers, this missionary is a person who shares the gospel. So by supporting them in prayer and financial support, you are evangelizing. A church that does not evangelize, what happens? Someone said it soon dies. One of the visible signs that we are a true church is the burden for the lost and the sharing of the gospel. Trying to reach out to people. If that desire is not there in our hearts, we better examine ourselves. Because if you are saved, if you are converted, you know the plight and the deplorable position of others who are not saved. And you have a burden for them and you do everything in your means to reach out to them with the good news. May the Lord give us grace that we would not empty God of the gospel, but make God the center of the gospel. Proclaim the gospel in Christ. Proclaim his glory. May we join and partner with God that God would use us to save souls. May we be a living, vibrant, true church of the living God.